Amen. Praise God. Or 
any creator or creature that God created because he gave us favor. That's the word blessing. It means God declared public blessing upon man. Hallelujah. And God created you. Talking about you. He blessed you. In other words, he favored you. So it means when you are with your colleagues or with anybody else around you, there is something different about you. Because God didn't just create you, but he then gave you a blessing. The blessing is then favor. We may be doing the same thing. We may be pursuing the same thing. But the results will be the same. For one good reason, there is what we call favor. We may be hungry in the street, doing almost the same thing like the man of God was saying, but there is something different about you because God didn't just create you, but He blessed you, which means He favored you. Hallelujah. Amen. We may be only living in the place or in the time of crisis where inflation rate is against us where everything is escalating beyond our imagination, where we are now into recession, but there is one thing that will keep us unique and standing and going, it's the blessing that gave us faith. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I want to talk to people who understand who they are today, because we are not into the purpose of God. Hallelujah. So number two, when God gives the blessing, but this is God blessed, it means number two, He gave us power to get wealth or power to prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the fact that you don't know that you have power to prosper, it doesn't mean God didn't do His job. Hallelujah. God blessed them. In other words, God gave you power to prosper. What is power? is the ability to do anything. So God gave you the ability to prosper. What is prospering is to excel in every space where you are. It may be in the marketplace, in business, wherever you are, God gave you power to prosper. Hallelujah. When everybody is pulling back, when everybody is not sure, we are sure because we have been given how to prosper. May God bless you. So, but it says God bless them. That's number one. He blesses. Want us to align to the purpose of God. Especially the church. You know what's so surprising for this is that the people outside the church. They understood the scripture more than we did as a church. Understood the purpose of God, that right? God wants us to prosper and they prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If we come and make a Sunday just to find out where are the people who are prospering in the world? Are they in the church or outside the church? Outside. The outside. But is it not the scripture? Not scripture. That John 2 says, Brethren, I pray and desire that you may prosper as your soul prosper in every in every thing, not in some of the things. He never said you may prosper in prayer. That's obvious. We appreciate it. You know, that's an advantage. But it says, I wish and desire that you may prosper in everything as you so prosper. Hallelujah. So it is according to God's purpose that we prosper. Because when we, when we prosper, when we do well, we are representing Him on earth. People can see the goodness of God through us. Let's go through the scripture. That will be the only scripture today that we're going to talk about. And my desire and my prayer is that everybody sit together and be provoked today. That you may not remain where you are because you have to align to the purpose of God. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of today. It's to align, shift you 
close up to the purpose of God. Do what God has called you to do. Do according to what God desires. That is not according to God's will that the church is begging for anything. That is not according to God's will that the church is the poorest place on earth. That's not God's will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God blessed them and gave them the power. He gave to Abraham, you were the father of nations. And Abraham was the most fruitful man on earth ever lived. However, he had only two sons. So it can never be about giving birth. So when God says be fruitful, that's the same. Give birth to kids. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's what, what the Bible is talking about. The content of the scripture to say, God give birth. But the, the word to be fruitful, our word says, be productive. Produce something. Be productive, produce something. It's all about you being productive. If you are a servant of God, we want to see many servants of God because you are productive. You produce other ministers. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are a lawyer, we need to see more lawyers because you are productive. You produce. Praise the Lord. And God is talking about being fruitful. Not something here. He does not talk about being seed full. Seed full. Seed full. He doesn't say be seed full. But he says be fruitful. Why? How can I give fruit without a seed? God knows exactly that I have given you a seed. A seed is not your issue. It's not your problem. Your issue is to be fruitful. Some of us we are waiting on God. Yet God has given us a seed. He's just expecting us to be fruitful. Just expecting us to be fruitful, to be productive, to produce. But for the sake, produce something. Hallelujah. Produce something. The will of God is for us to prosper. That's the purpose of God. It's for the church to prosper, not the church to live in poverty. I'm sorry if the gospel is not what you are used to, but it is not according to God's will that we live in poverty. But the purpose of God is that we prosper in everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word be fruitful means produce something, be productive. Hallelujah. Be productive. God has given you the seed. Now you have to be productive. What is the seed? God gives you an idea. What you need to do is to be fruitful, is to produce, is to reproduce, is to be productive. God has given you a vision. What you need to do is to be fruitful. Steve Jobs, all know him, he was given an idea, a mere idea. But he has created incredible things, produced incredible technology. We now have a iPhone of what enters. That is because of a man that God gave him a seed, which is an ideal. And the man understood the scripture that I have to be fruitful. I have to produce something. You are sitting with your great idea. You are producing nothing. You think God is happy. Because you come to church and pray. That's not true. That's not true. How many ideas are here? One of the greatest men uh, once said, uh, Dr. Miles once said, the richest place in the world is there. Hundred percent. Please, there's someone who read books. Uh, the richest place in the world is the graveyard. When you go by the grave, you'll find that there's too much potential that was buried, never used. Because when God created man, gave man a seed. God gave man the power to produce. God gave man the blessing. And men never understood that they died with that potential. That's why the richest place is the grave. Maybe you're going to die with your potential, but to 
name appear to perform you, that God has given you the ability. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the time that you start to wake up something. It's the time that you start to build something. You've got an idea. For sure, I know. You've got an idea. And it's not coming from you, it's coming from God. You've got a vision. I know for sure. It is not your vision. It's God that gave you that vision as a seed. What you need to do is to be fruitful. Reproduce. Produce something. Be productive. That's what the scripture says. Let's move to the next one. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to touch only this scripture. We pray and we go. But my desire when, I, when we come next time, let's see a different view. Hallelujah. May you be different. When it continues, it says, you must multiply. Just look at this scripture. It says, God bless them. You say, be fruitful. And you say, multiply. Multiply is all about feeding the world with kids. Stop it. If you thought that's what God meant. When he says multiply, it's not saying fill the world with kids. Actual fact is, I'm sorry, I know at home we are seven. My mom gave them to seven kids. You know, three died. So we were supposed to be ten. I was so this thing. And that's why they're struggling to raise us, you know. It was a struggle for our parents to raise us because we were about it. That was not God's purpose. God's purpose was not for them to keep producing kids. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm sorry if you were planning to go that far. But yeah, maybe you can rethink about it. When God talks about multiplication, multiply, it says reproduce, reproduce again. So there is no way you can prosper or succeed if you don't reproduce what you have produced. That's why that's multiplication. If you can't reproduce what you produce, if you check, uh, or to you, uh, the man of God was making an example that you open an office here, you leave some people consulted, you open another office that reproducing who you are, reproducing your work, reproducing your gifts, reproducing your ideas. When you go to you somewhere to this McDonald's, when you go to, I don't know where you're from, in your area, there is McDonald's. When you leave the country, go to other countries, there is McDonald's. Then you, how, how, how. And they are always in business and they are doing well. And then this one is the, is the McDonald's founder or CEO, a Christian. No, 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 not a Christian. But they understood the principle that God gave them. But this church failed to understand. They interpreted the church, interpreted the principle wrong. That's why the church is busy producing kids. Reproducing kids and the world, instead of reproducing kids, they reproduce their business, they do well, they dominate us and they rule us and they become our boss. Yet God says, You shall be the boss. There is a saying, I think it's Ecclesiastes, it says, There is a problem because the snakes are on top of the horses and the prince and princess are walking. Because the snake understood the principle and they took it in red, red. But the priests and priests, they never understood. They are confused. That's why they're making kids. Kids are a blessing from God. They are good, but don't make more. Amen. Uh, you know, unless you are financially stable. Because we make a mistake, make more kids, we can't take them to good schools. We kill in their future. We make more kids, we can't give them proper education. Do you understand what I'm saying? Consists, reproduce, multiply. What do you have? Reproduce. Some of you, you sit by a corner and uh, say whatever you say. I'm here today to tell you, reproduce. Try to find another corner and put someone else there. To, to look, you know, you have to start where you are. That's correct. That the middle of what is mentioned, 
that you start where you are. Your desire to start somewhere where you are not. Start where you are, but have the principle that I have to reproduce what I'm doing. I have to do it more. If you're selling content, you must start to order in rounds as well. Order the races, all the books, because we are reproducing what you do. You will never succeed if you don't reproduce. Hallelujah. Reproduce the product. Reproduce the service. The two things that will make us prosper. We must have a product. If you don't have a product, you must have a service. What do you have? It's okay. Do you get what I'm saying? You must have a product. And once you have a product, make sure that it wants to grow. You reproduce it, keep growing it. If you have a service, make sure that your service is not only for one client. Reproduce, get more clients, do it to more people. The church must be in business as well. The church must dominate the marketplace. Hallelujah. The church must do well. Yeah. To get what I'm saying. The church must be the place where people come and seek for help from, not the other way around. That's the purpose of God. The purpose of God is for the church to rule the earth. It's for the church to dominate in the world, not the world to dominate the church. It's the other way around. That's not the purpose of God. So we want to align that to the purpose of God. That we are the kings, we are the priests. We are the priests. We are the queens according to God's word. So how can we remain kings and queens if the world is overpowering us? And the only way the world can overpower us is because they are prosperous and we are not. I've never been at Konka, but I know there is a place called Konka. I just want you to go there. I don't know how to check the cars that are coming to and come to change and change the cars that we have. Let's see if we are a Koma, we are living according to God's purpose. I know it's not about material things, but that's, that, that's the truth of the material. The church must build schools, the church must build hospitals, the church must build churches. Amen. Some of our, our, our brothers are struggling in a tent in this day and age, and we say it's impossible. When we go to business seminars and look at the place where they attend business seminars, it's going to blow your mind. Absolutely stunning places. They don't have God. God is an excellent God. I'm not saying being in a tent is wrong. Get me one. But that's not where we are called to be. We have to move away from that. That's not our portion. That's not the purpose. The, people, the, the reason people don't even wish to come to church is because there is nothing that seems to be a proof that God works what exists. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Amen. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen. There is no empirical proof that what we do in it works. We are always in that tent. There is no electricity. We are all struggling. The world is looking for solution and the solution must come from the church. That's how God wanted things to be. We are the salt of the world, we are the solution of the world. The world is struggling and the world is looking for solution and the solution has to come from the church. Hallelujah. Amen. I know some of you say, ah, but it's fine, I'm going to be well. I've got solar panels in my house, I've got an inventor, even if a small takes its own power. I'm okay. It's not all about you. If you think it's all about you, then you have missed the purpose of God. It's not about you. Hallelujah. If there are still countries in the world, in Africa, that are still back and are still struggling, then you have not yet been according to God's purpose. You may be a CA, you may be a lawyer, you may be an engineer, living a middle class life and think you have made it, but that's not the purpose of God. It's not God, it's not about you. Hallelujah. The purpose of God is for us to bring transformation in the world. It's for us to bring church in the world. How so? How can we access the people in Parliament if we are still struggling as a church? We don't even have a voice because we are struggling. Do you understand? 
when they had to do uh, COVID-19 regulations, and who is an essential, who is not an essential. Churches were not even consulted because no one is a boss. But some businessmen, big businessmen, were operating because they were consulted. Do you understand what I'm saying? That leaves a call. And the church has to work up and do something. And I pray, it's my prayer, especially the young minds. Everybody sitting here, I see a young, a young brain. All the young brains say, let's do something for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Mighty ground means reproduce what God gave you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you continue, it says, you shall replenish. Replenish. What replenish means distribute. Distribution. I think I've already emphasized on that. Distribution. Need to distribute. Work on it. You distribute. Hallelujah. You, 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 before you, the problem with the church, we are so mediocre. That's why I'm trying to behave in the church. We are so mediocre. You can't be a person, start something, do something, but we are not perfect in what we do. We don't fight for perfection. Let's see if our God is not a perfect God. Hallelujah. For you, you, you distribute your product and service to your power to do. You need to make sure that work on it. You refine it. You refine it again. You make, you make sure that is the best and it's number one. And you distribute it to your world. Hallelujah. Without distribution, we cannot prosper. We have to distribute. If I don't know what to do, then you have not yet started. Please, the people around you, they must know what is your sayings. What do you do? What can you offer? What can you do the best? And be the best in your game. Hallelujah. If a musician be the best in your game, we sleep too much, especially in Africa. We sleep a lot. How many hours do you sleep? It's okay. It's okay. We sleep too much. You know, everybody on the earth has got 24 hours to operate. And it's a matter of how do you use those hours to be the best. The best are not the best because they were born the best. The best are not the best because a miracle happened. They understood that they have to work on themselves. If you have to work on your gift and you still sleep in eight hours, then there's a problem. I'm sorry if you offend you, but there's a problem. If you have a special skin, you have to still sleep eight hours, then there should be an issue. If you want to be the greatest business man, business woman, you have to still sleep eight hours, then there's a problem. God has given you the sin. Now it's up to you to make sure that you prosper. God has blessed you, given you the ability. Now it's on you to make sure that you work on it, distribute it. That's the next thing, the next word. When he says replenish, distribute, I'll do it. Then, five says, which is almost the last, it says, then you shall, you shall subdue. Subdue, subdue. The word subdue simply means dominate, overrule, control, take control. I know some of you, how some of us will be dominated by our boss. How many people is your boss is here? It's okay. And you'll be your own boss. Because if your boss says, I want you in the office, 
And then a patient in the hospital says, I'm dying, I want to pray now. You check. You start to check. Where to go? Where to go, my brother? Be honest. You go to the office, otherwise the lights will be off one day. If you go to do court's purpose, you can't tell your boss that, hey, I've got a patient in the hospital that I have to attend to to pray for. There is no such. You can't tell your boss that. They over control us. They rule over us. Yet God says you shall subdue over every man. But your boss is ruling you. And God deliver us from this nine to five. And be our own boss. Amen. So that we can say, okay, today I'm going to Helen Joseph Hospital. And I know there are people pushing the business. Tomorrow I'm going to Paraguana Hospital. I know business is going. And today, let me go and check mom, mom, mom's mama because I had a situation. You can't do that if you are stuck in a nine to five job. Amen. There is no influence you can bring in the world if you are working for somebody. I'm not saying go and quit your job. Many of God says, start something while you live. Work on it, refine it, multiply it, distribute it. Once you see that it's self sustaining, and you can live on it, then you can send the good one. You understand? Amen. God gave us this commandment that we shall rule over everything, we shall dominate over everything. But it's so hard because we are not in this purpose. And may God deliver us from being slaves, yet we are kings. We, we, we want to close it like this. When you read James 2 14 says, What good it is, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and be filled, without giving them the things they need or they desire for their bodies, what good is that? Is that faith? Yeah, we are people of faith. Men of God, we are people of faith. But is it faith if there is one child in the church that is saying, I don't know what to eat after the church, and you say, God bless you, go in peace. Is that faith? Is it faith that the villages are full of kids that are not going to school, yet there is a church just by the corner, and the kids don't have money to go to school? Is that faith? Mazara, please bring me here. Is it faith that kids are coming back from university and spelling because they couldn't pay for their, uh, for their institution uh, bills it, and yet there is a church called by God. Is that faith? Do you define it as faith? Absolutely not. Is it God's will? Is it God's purpose? No. Not at all. It's not at all. God empowered the church. And God gave the church the rest. But the church decided just to hide it and said we live by faith. There's nothing wrong with living by faith. We definitely want to see heaven. We want to rejoice. But what have you done on earth? What influence have you brought in this mother earth? How many kids are going to school because of you? How many families are fed because of you? How many people can say I'm, I'm personally today because of you? How many lives are you transforming? How many lives are you church as a Christian? And you will never do it if you are suffering like that. You must be different. And God gave you the ability to be different. Because He blessed you, He gave you the favor, 
and he gave you the ability. Hallelujah. May the church do better. May the church do better. Hallelujah. Amen. May we do better as well. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a gift, you have a skill, you have a vision. You, you have a talent. God gave you everything. May you do better. Hallelujah. Amen. May you do better. May we find everything we need in the house of God. May we find sickness in the house of God. May we find entrepreneurs in the house of God. May we find engineers. Everything that we need, let it be in the house of God. On 
unless I'm faithful to the Lord. I'm going to keep it safe. What God gave me, I'm going to keep it safe. That's a choice. Heal it. And when the master came back, 5, two, uh, five plus 1, 10, 2 plus 2, 4, 1 plus 0. The master was disappointed. I'm sure God is disappointed. After so much work that I have done in you, you are doing absolutely nothing in the world. Yet we call you our son, servants of God, here on earth. Yet you are doing absolutely nothing. Please invest your skill. Invest your gift. Invest your ministry. Invest whatever you love. Don't be afraid. Do things that make us do a fruitful lesson. Let me pray. Number one, the church is very ignorant. Say it again. The church is very ignorant. ignorant. If there are ignorant people in the world, it's the church. If I can ask you what's happening in 2023, who knows? Except for not changing it's been there since 2008. So it's nothing new. What's happening? Church doesn't know because we are ignorant. Did you know that if you buy a house in a board in 2023, you will swipe? Yeah. Who knows? Okay. I know. Why? <laughs> because the interest rates have shifted so much so that the world is reaching a, a, a time of recession. That's where we are. Mm. But the church now is inspired because the church is ignorant to information that can assist us. We don't study. The church doesn't study. The church doesn't do research. How many books have you read in the past five months? And finish them. I'm not talking about because we go to buy and browse and do. How many? Is it zero? One. Honestly speaking, zero. How are you going to be informed or to be informative if you don't read? There is no other way. The church is very ignorant. If you don't read, you get outdated. And we are so outdated, we live in 2002. Mm. That's why we move like we, we lose everything because we are still in 2002. We are not up to date. And readers are leaders. How can we lead if we don't read as a church? So the church is very ignorant, that's not all. We don't take information serious and we don't watch where we are. We don't do research about the space where we are. You are in a space, you are in a career. That's your space. You must know everything around the space. You must research everything around the space because you want to prosper. Hallelujah. You will never prosper if you don't have knowledge. But people perish because of lack of what? That's what God says. The world knows that. That if I take knowledge, I'll perish. That's why the church is perishing. Because they do not have knowledge. We are so ignorant. So I read the Bible every day. Who doesn't not read the Bible? We do. But we are up to date because we need other sources. We need books. We must know what's happening around us. We must know what's the next thing. We are destroyed because we don't have knowledge. Then you go start reading about what you want and desire in life. Then you start to reading around your business. Then you start reading around your expertise. Whatever you do in life, then you start doing research around it. Then you get up to date every day. Finding the problem if you don't read. Finding the problem if you don't have books. How many people buy books? Now I can share books because you have books. How to pray. We know how to pray. God, Jesus told us how to pray. Why is the Bible books how to pray? We know. The Bible teaches us about how to pray. Can you buy books that speaks about your investment? What is the difference between a saving account and an investment account? The church doesn't know. It says, I'm saving. My money is in a saving account. After after five years, how much do you get? How much interest do you go? Two liter. Three percent. Yet the world understands every system. They take their money, put it into an investment account. After the same period of time, they've got 
20% more you're sitting at 2% because you don't know. I know of some, most of you, those especially the middle class people, the middle class people, those who for a car, middle class people for a car, for a house, you, your kids are going to a better school, you're eating, you make this breakfast and some nuts, you know, you're living, that you think you're making. I know you for what we call a fixed saving account for 32 days notice. What does it help you? If you have a, let me forgive you. I may have said more clothes than me. It's good to have money that you can access, call them emergency fund. That's, that's correct. Everybody must have an emergency fund. We can quickly access it. You don't know what can happen. But don't keep your money into a saving account. You will never get in your way. You will never prosper. Take your money, invest it. Some of you didn't even know that you can buy a share with 50 cents. 0 0.50 cents. You can buy a share of the company and be an investor. At the age where you are, with the money that you have, the one realm that you take it to a saving account, why can't you buy shares? Two shares. With one another. In the next few years, process we let them to invest things, we invest them for some certain times of period. Then in the next couple of years, it will be more than what you bought. We don't know this information because the church is very ignorant. The last thing, the church lives in fear. It's very amazing how the church does the opposite of the Bible. God says fear not, and we are rooted in quoting God's scripture. But when it comes to the marketplace, we are so afraid. I'd rather keep my 10 grand in my pocket than to invest in something somewhere else. I'm afraid. The church lives under fear. That's why we sit with our gifts, we sit with our talents, we can't do anything. That's why you can't even quit your job because we're afraid. How are we going to pay the things? Fear. And when you go out to the world, they are not afraid. They tell you that. I just trust the process. They've got faith. I trust the process. I invest my money. I wait and trust the process. They prosper. They quit their job. They start their companies. And the company prosper. I'm not saying go quit your job. It's strategic. Don't get me wrong. You understand what I'm saying? But the church is under fear. You are afraid until the pension. The pension. You will be that company be a slave of somebody, that somebody be your boss because we are afraid until we are 60, then you go. There's a pension. The right time to do it is now. If you have not started, start now. If you've got an idea, start to register business while you are in that company where you're working. Start working on your documentation while you're in that company where you're working. Put your legal document in place and you're waiting in the Lord to say any opportunity that comes, I am ready. The church is not ready because we are afraid. We are afraid. What if it fails? Fear of failure. What if it fails? What if it doesn't work? God has given you the ability, the power to prosper, the favor, the grace to prosper. Hallelujah. May we stand on our feet. to take a step of faith. I know there is a lot in you. I know God has given you a lot. I want you to take a step of faith. Say, I will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take a step of faith and say, I will start my own business. I will start my own company. I will start following my passion. I will start following my gift. I will multiply my time because that's the purpose of God. Hallelujah. I will start doing great things for the world. I will start to bring change in the world because that's the purpose of God. God has called you for such things. Hallelujah. And take a step of faith. The Bible says there were four little girls outside the city. They were put outside the city because if you had little around those towns, you were taken away from other people. 
because it was continuous. You could uh, uh, take it to the next person just being approximate to each other. So they would take it out of the seat. Hallelujah. They would fall, take it out of the seat. Then they spoke among each other. They said, with the disease we have, we definitely want to die as time proceeds. And with the hunger that we have, because we don't have food we are, we're also going to die. And if we approach the city, they will definitely kill us. You know, this person is in a position of dying in a way. Even if you keep your ten rand in your pocket, you're still going to be suffering. Even if you keep your thousand rand in your saving account, you are still struggling. It doesn't make a difference. Do you understand what I'm saying? They will discuss among themselves what can help us. Let's rather die going forward. Let's rather die pushing forward. Don't die in your situation. Don't die stagnant. Don't die in your job. I don't know which business idea you have to follow, but today we're 